our Gulf Coast MakerCon 2015 coverage is proudly powered by the Microsoft Store. Go ahead and imagine presenting the thinnest and lightest Surface ever, the Surface 3. The perfect balance of performance and value for students, families, and more. Pre-order yours today or check out all the other latest gadgets at f5live.tv slash Microsoft. All right, so we have somebody else here with us, actually, the second of our repeats from last year, which is pretty wonderful. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm John Adair. I'm on the board of directors for Tampa Hackerspace. We're a community wake makerspace in kind of the West Shore area of Tampa. Okay. This is our as a as a group. <laughs> this is probably our this is our fourth year doing this event. So okay. um, we've only been together as a makerspace for two years, but. Okay. Everybody, the principals involved have been here four years, so we've been around. Gotcha. Cool. So what kinds of stuff happen at the Tampa Hackerspace? Uh, it keeps growing and growing and growing. So we, we have our big event every week. We do an open house almost every Tuesday night. Now we've gone to, we have a member-only meeting once a month, but okay. otherwise we do an open house every Tuesday night, which is kind of the way everybody gets together and kind of gets updated on what everybody's doing. Okay. Um, a bunch of people come and visit the space and tour the space, but we have things like everything, like there's a, the Enable group over here doing the yep. 3D printed prosthetic hands. Um, they've been coming in and meeting there. Very um, cool. We had them on at a, at a Roboticon, I think this past year. Yeah, and that's, I mean, seeing... They're a great group. And now we're starting to host other meetups, like we've had a PHP meetup. We're starting to have a Raspberry Pi meetup that we're able to host at the space. But our primary purpose is for members to come in and be able to use the space to make things. Cool. Um, that means everything from just making things for fun to prototyping stuff for commercial production. We don't really support building things in a <laughs> production line facility, sure. but we can help that get set up. Um, we do everything from electronics to 3d printing we have a laser cutter engraver on site now okay. we've got small cncs that can cut small things to wow. a um we've got a shop bot cnc that you can shoot a, put a sheet of plywood in a full sheet of plywood and cut and route every shape out of it we have guys awesome. that use that to cut arcade cabinets and pinball machine cabinets that's their that's their vague that's their vague concern is getting those cut and then yeah. um we just got a huge donation in of metalworking gear. We got um, a Tormach CNC, a vertical mill, a lathe, two little mini lathes, and a bunch of other metalworking. It's wow. about a nearly a forty thousand dollar donation from a gentleman. So wow! Wow! That kind of derails our budget and everything because now we have to add some accessories. We have to add some safety gear. Sure. We have to get a couple of people trained to be able to train everybody else and. Uh, that's that was something that was on the map to maybe start doing next year. So that got really got accelerated in a hurry. <laughs> so uh, I mean, that's it's amazing to get that kind of support out of the community. Uh, but uh, it's just shocking how fast we've grown. I mean, we sat here at this event two years ago and said, I think there's enough demand that we could start one of these in Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> and and then last year, I remember we were talking. I think we were in a we were in the Cowork Tampa space, so it was still sixteen hundred square feet. Right now, we're forty two hundred square feet space. Okay. in our own Got building, a lot um, with and we, that felt huge when we moved in. It doesn't feel huge anymore. We're running out of space again already. <laughs> so, uh, you, you guys are in the uh, in the the same building with, uh, with our, our associate producer, who's been. <laughs> Uh, his company is in the, in the building with you guys. Oh, the... RT Parts Co. RT Parts Co. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then... Um, and we're not far from... Uh, I mean, we're not far from your office or old office? Old office. All right, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's a neat area. I mean, we like being near West Shore, near the airport. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a really cool area. It was a little bit of a pain to move further away from USF. We lost some USF students, but it made it really convenient to come over the bridge from St. Pete sure. or Clearwater and come visit... Um, and we get a lot of out-of-town guests. Being down near the airport makes it easy for somebody to drop in. We've sure. had visitors from uh, Red Mountain Labs, I think, in Alabama, uh, uh, Atlanta, uh, AT not ATX in Atlanta, Atlanta Freeside. Uh, we've had a German makerspace come by. I mean, it's wow. just amazing to get these guys to come by. And that's that's it's always good to get their input and different take on it. And sometimes they'll look around and go, it's a little bit older than it is in our space. <laughs> I mean, <it's, laughs> uh, so, 
at the Tampa Hacker Space. The, at the Tampa <laughs> Hacker Space. Um, do you guys also like teach classes on like how? Like, right. So we do some of the equipment and stuff. We teach. We struggle a little bit to keep up our teachers. Um, we're always looking for more people to come in and teach almost any topic they want that that fits kind of what we do. Um, we teach. We do teach a good rotation of classes on different ways to use the 3D printers, the different CAD software that's out there. Like there's OpenSCAD that's really good for guys that are programmers or mathematicians, and you've got like Blender that's a little better for somebody that's more of a digital artist. And then um, we teach classes on how to run the different equipment, like running the laser cutter. Uh, right. We've had one CNC class. We're trying to get more of those scheduled. I talked to about four different people today already about coming to teach classes. And uh, it's one of the deals we'll work with people, too. If they'll come teach a couple of classes a month, we'll give them free membership. We are happy to work with instructors and try to help them out and reward them and everything. Um, and all of our, almost all of our classes are open to the public, whether you're a member or not. There might be an additional fee for a non-member. And then we do occasionally run some free events. Um, we did like a day of laser cutting. We did a day last fall with a 3D printer where we ran a number of classes. And... Um, and then Tuesday nights when we're, we do an open house, if anybody's free to come in and we kind of have to juggle time on the 3D printers, but then come 3D print some stuff. And wow. That's, that's defi definitely the limiting factor on 3D right. printers is time. 3D printers <laughs> are slow. Laser cutters are fast. So yeah. I mean, uh, it's been neat to do that. It's been an interesting year. I mean, we've, we've gone, and I've talked to a number of other makerspace runners about this. Like, you're, we've gone from grow, 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 grow to we've got to run this thing now and you've got to maintain all the equipment and you've got to keep this instructor that was teaching now is tired of teaching and doesn't want to do it anymore right. or moved or job situation changed. Now you've got to replace this piece of equipment. You've got to maintain everything. You got, we got, we actually had a, we've had a couple of problems lately. Like we weren't running new member orientation fast enough to get people oriented <laughs> and, and get their key cards. And we're like, wow. this is a really quality problem to have or things like, uh, this guy wants to use a laser cutter, but the class isn't for three weeks. How do we run How do we a separate class just for him? And it's like, so, I mean, the, and now we've got the new donation of the metal working gear. It's like, we yeah. weren't planning on this at all. So, uh, yeah, the growth. <laughs> so what kind of membership do you guys have? So we run, when I talk about memberships, we have a $50 a month membership right. that gives you 24-7 access to the space. Okay. You get a key card reader and a combination for the lock and an alarm code. Um, you can come and use the space anytime you want. Um, there's a hundred dollar a month membership, which is just as more of a supporting member. You get a little bit more storage space. You get guest passes on top of that. Okay. And then we're always willing to work a deal for an instructor. And then when I talk about membership, you're always welcome to not join. Come take our classes. Come to the open makes. And if you're on the fence about whether fifty dollars a month is worth it, come do those things for a while. And if it's worth it, join. Cool. And, if, and how many people do you have join? Um, our membership right now is at about. 54, I think, at the last at the last meeting we went, we had 54. Okay. Um, we've gone up to a little bit over 60 and down to around 50 in the last okay. four months. So it's uh, we we're shooting to get to 80. I think once we hit about 100, I think I think I talked about this last year. Once we get to 100, 120, I think that's when the space really starts to want to splinter where there'll be right. enough people that want to go do biotech or these guys will want to only do a wood shop and maybe they'll want to split off but yeah but we haven't gotten there yet so <laughs> maybe next year we'll be talking about the the day we had to split because we had too many people <laughs> but well you know what sometimes too many people can be a blessing and sometimes it can be a curse right so there's <laughs> well it there certainly is a juggling act and I, uh, I also really have to i mean i really have to thank all of our members and the, all of our community that's come out because I talked to so many other spaces that in their first year or first or second year, they had a huge fracture and board fights and members didn't get along. And, and every space I talked to, that happened. And we're like, that didn't happen to us. So keep doing a good yeah, job, guys. Keep crossed. getting along. <laughs> <laughs> Very that's, little drama. That's definitely good because yeah, drama can kill an organization. Quick. Right. So... Well, we appreciate you coming and talking to us. Yeah. Um, come out and check us out on a Tuesday night. Come check out the other spaces in the area, too. I mean, uh, St. Pete Makers, hopefully, is going to get going soon. John of Germany, the Hive. The Hive. I've uh, visited the Hive a couple of times. Um, the different Makerspace libraries, the new one popping up in Land O'Lakes. Yep. Uh, I mean, these. come visit a Makerspace. If you're not near us, I mean, find another find one. Find one. There's find one. 
they're they're it's, showing up all. It's over more. The it's place. more than just a place to go make stuff. I mean, the so many people come in. Like I didn't know there were this many people into this, or like I can't believe yeah. this guy does what I do. Or I mean, just yeah, the I, the community is I more important believe, than the building. I can't believe I'm not the only one in Tampa that does chain mail. Right. <laughs> well, I, I mean. I, I know, like, you did First Tech Challenge Robotics. We had a guy come in the other day with a robot built with Actobotics stuff that looked just like a First Tech Challenge robot. It was almost an 18-inch cube, but it expanded out this way and this way, <laughs> and it was just this monstrous robot when oh it expanded because he built it to climb stairs. I'm like, I can't believe it. And he didn't know anything about First Tech Challenge. I'm like, you got to see what the kids do. Yeah. And the kids got to see what you do and yeah, just getting sure. things connected. It's Yeah, uh, com- community involvement is a big thing especially yeah. for maker spaces and if you're not here at MakerCon this year come to a maker con come yes. to these shows yes, come meet absolutely. people i mean it's a fantastic situation to be able to have all these people in one place and talk to them and and see what everybody does because so. it's definitely an interesting group and you can even if it's even if it's not you right like it, you don't do chain mail but yeah. the thing that she does may inspire you in what you do you go wow you know what i never thought about was linking or right. you know, whatever seeing the weird things may yeah like we have that something in your world the guy that teaches a traditional leatherworking class at our space now knows right. how to laser cut leather which you mix those two that's very different absolutely and doing leatherworking you may not do fur stuff right. like right over here but something that she does may in some process she does may apply to you right or so. being able to 3d print the molds for uh for a i can't remember what she calls it when she reframe a, a fur on stuff yeah you know? <laughs> absolutely so there's all kinds of collaboration that can happen yeah. here in a really yeah. good way yeah so. so this is a great event to do that and absolutely well we're glad you came and talked to us glad again. you're back again i hope the uh tampa hackerspace continues to to grow and be drama free yeah <laughs> drama free keep growing and uh be Successful. manageable yeah. all right all right have a good rest of the show you too